Um, we are set. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to meet the chat room. Celebrity of the week. And celebrity, what is your name, please? My name is Daryl Mott Jr. I'm also known in the chat room and online as Abstruse. There's another S on that, Dick. Okay. Right. Uh, hang, hang on the day. Um, uh, check your gain level on your microphone. You sound very blown out. Uh, is that better? Oh, much better. Thank you. Way better. Way All better. Right. So say your name right. again. Uh, Daryl Mott Jr., also known as Abstruse. Okay, Daryl. Is that right? Did I get it? Daryl, you said? Yes. Yes. Okay, and Daryl, where are we talking to you? You are? Uh, in Orange, Texas. It's a little dot on the map town uh, right on the Texas-Louisiana border. And what's the current temperature it... there? Uh, I have no idea. Something in the 90s. Oh, in the 90s. Good, because we get to use... Wow, look at the, the graphic. Oh, my God. What is that behind you? Uh, it looks those like... Are... Wait. Uh, oh. You're talking about... This right here? Yeah. Uh, that was the, the book you just sent me whenever I bought one of your ba boxes of crap. Oh, did you buy a box of crap last week? Yes, I did. Okay. Did you, well, did, was there good stuff in it? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a little uh, coffee mug that doesn't spill because it's suction cups oh, that, to the Oh, that thing is, the little coffee mug is great. That sells for 15 bucks. What else? Yep. And then, uh. There was a bottle cooler warmer thing, like a koozie for the uh, soda stream. Okay. And I got the spy watch. Oh, okay. But you forgot to send me the cable, so I got to track those down. Oh, okay. Okay. The spy watch. Um, yeah, remind me later, chat room, because I, I, I can tell you how to get a box of crap. There is more. And I was getting stuff together. Someone's going to get the spy watch, not the spy watch, but the spy keychain, the keychain with a built in camera. Uh, so, Daryl, what do you do? First of all, why you dress so well? well you I are the best dress dressed same. person. You are the best dressed person ever on GizFizz. Well, of course, I'm meeting one of my idols. I kind of have to dress nice, but I, I normally like wearing suits and ties because, I mean, look at me. I'm going to be the big guy no matter what. I'd rather be the big guy in a suit than the big guy dressed like a slob. Well, okay. Uh, I mean, you, you're not on your way from a party or on a way to oh, a no. party. All right. Nope. Okay. So uh, if we were not, if you were not chat room celebrity of the week, what would you be wearing? T-shirt and pajama pants, probably. Okay, okay. That's why I'm normally watching the show, wearing, so. <laughs> okay, well, pretty much. I think everybody is, too. The, you'll be happy to know the publisher of MAD. Uh, if Annie was having guests, we always had to call Annie first to say, is Bill uh, wearing anything decent that we can actually walk in right now? And she'll say, <laughs> hang on, I'll tell him to put some more clothes on. Um, and, Daryl, what do you do for a living? Well, I have a day job doing software QA for a firm that does mapping software and tax software for shipping companies like trucking companies. Okay, that, that's interesting, I guess. And you uh, have a different job? Yeah, you have two I, different also, I also write the gaming column for Ain't It Cool News, the tabletop gaming column. And I have a podcast called The Gamer's Tavern. And what's your website where your column appears? Gamerstavern.org. Game is tavern. Now, .org, doesn't that signify it's like a nonprofit? It did in the 90s. I think they loose, I can't loosen the restrictions in the early 2000s, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. But so I could get .org if I wanted to. Yeah. Should yeah. be able to. I mean, I should. It's almost a charity. Um, and, oh, there it is. Mm-hmm. Podcast to level up your game. Is that uh, uh, Game Table Episode 10? Is that your column? Uh, yes, it is. That's our actual play podcast of Shadowrun 4th Edition. It's a pen and paper role playing game, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, but it's like urban fantasy meets uh, cyberpunk. So it's like what? you're plugging your direct brain directly into the computer to hack the matrix. Now, for the record, my podcast is not safe for work. So there's lots of foul language on there. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Just for just for a warning for the audience out there. 
No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Um, all right. And we always ask how you found out about Leo and or Twit. I worked a job doing data entry for a long time, and they let you listen to, like, uh, put your earbuds in and listen to whatever. So, of course, I first thing I went to was, oh, hey, that's that guy from that show I used to watch on Tech TV. And so I was listening to I was listening to Twit before it became a thing. And of course, I knew Leo from Tech TV days. And I recently got another job, like the past two years ago where I could start listening to podcasts again. So I started catching up and started expanding. And that's how I found the Gizfiz. Oh, great. Great. So you, you, you can listen to the podcast during your day job when you're at doing well, your software, not the current day job. This is my last job where I did, I did accounting oh, like. for a casino. Okay. So you have casinos by your home or where you live. Yeah. Right across the border in Louisiana. Oh, Okay. One on bandits and all that. Everything's legal. Mm. Well, the casino I worked at was just slot machines. Just slot machines. Okay. Tell me, is there a possible way to game a slot machine that you know of? Nope. No. They are. Okay. There's so much regulation going on. We had to. I had to sign in and out with locks on the trailers when they were bringing the slot machines in and out. So the, the slot machines are always watched, always regulated, and they're all computer chip controlled. So you'd have to actually get access to the guts of the machine. And they're going to kind of notice you doing that. Okay. Okay. You know, because um, I haven't read this in a long time, but years ago, before like my first trip to Vegas, so we're talking probably 30 years ago, was uh, the advice to win was always play slot machines that are facing the public because they will pay the most money because hotels want you to think all the machines pay off like that. And, and I was thinking, well, how could they make just those two machines pay off and, and the others well, they not? Can, so, they can control each individual machine, but... Oh, it's, they can. Yeah, it's really, really, really highly regulated, though, in terms of... It depends on the state because it's all governed by the State Gaming Commission. In Louisiana, it is very strict in what levels they can put, uh, like how often it can pay off. They can't have loose slots. That's illegal. They have to pay off uh, within a certain range. Oh, okay. Oh, so, so it could be said. The, so they could say that it must pay off at least once every 500 times or something like well, that. So along those lines, it's, there's a lot of math involved in it, but pretty okay. much, yeah. Uh, Regatta says, you can game a slot machine by not playing okay okay um uh, i will uh, uh, let me see oh do you have pets we, i'm just trying to think of the questions that we normally ask uh have, any pets i have two cats they're both about 25 pounds each are they so roaming they're... around because someone in the chat room is going to say where are the cats in the other room it looks like they're not in, in the other here okay. i just had carpet okay. installed if you can see that nice blue carpet right over there uh, yeah. So they're, kind of, they're kind of scared of the new smell. You know what? Uh, are we, you know, but behind you, is that a showcase or just a, a series of shelves? Uh, no, that's a bunch of shelves. Because that that just, I, ju I oh. just moved into this place. And so I, I'm trying to move from audio podcasts into video podcasts so I can kind of be the twit of tabletop gaming. That's oh, so that's your back. Uh, that's sort of your backdrop. Uh, for now, this is a temporary one. It's just a bunch of the, it's the games that aren't in boxes right now. Oh, okay. Okay. I uh, know it's a, it's a good background. It's a good background. Um, <laughs> Stuart says, are the cats rigged? Uh, no, um, they kind of take care of themselves. One of them hopped up on the window, but it's going to be hard to get them, wrangle them over here, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Um, all right. So, Daryl, we're going to turn it. Can you uh, see the chat room from where you are? I okay. Can. Uh, so we're going to turn it over to you, chat room, to ask Daryl some questions. And uh, um, Daryl, shoot me an email with your snail mail address, and you will get, oh, you will be the first to get uh, ta -dum, ta -dum, the Ooh. August issue of Mad Magazine. Um, I'll send you that and one of those 35-year-old Alfred E. Newman pictures. 
All right, so the questions nice. have started. Yep. Uh, Pack and W asked, what are my cats' names? They're named uh, Harry, Blackfield, uh, Harry Blackstone Copperfield Dresden and Thomas Wraith after characters in the Dresden Files novel series. Uh, oh, yeah, we all knew that. Go ahead. Uh, the beef team said Mac or PC. PC, uh, I tried using a Mac mo once, and it was so easy to use. It was a bigger problem unlearning to try to relearn how to do it the easy way. So I, I stuck with PCs. Uh, UJ asked my favorite game, uh, Shadowrun. Uh, for brawl playing games, for tabletop games, it really depends. Uh, probably Cards Against Humanity, which is another very, very not safe for work game, but it's a blast. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, do I like egg McMuffins? Uh, not really. I'm actually on a diet. I'm in, <laughs> sorry, I just noticed a little kitty in the corner. Uh, but no, I try not to uh, eat a lot of fast food because I'm trying to lose weight. I'm down uh, 70 pounds so far this year. Wow. So doing pretty good. Uh, Becky asked if I'm a Douglas Adams fan. Uh, of course I am. Uh, who isn't a Douglas Adams fan? Uh, uh, what's my social security number? One, two, three, four, five. Good. Uh, <clears throat> Good. Your cat's very cute. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't my cat. My cats are black and oh, oh, one's, oh, one's oh, black and white, one's all black. But that is a I see. Cat. I, I was going to say that's a very clever cat to be able to get up on, on, on top of your insert there. Okay. Would not would not surprise me. Uh, my towel is in the other room. Uh, I can see it around the corner. But, uh, oh, is, your, like is your, sorry? Uh, is your podcast live? Someone asked. Uh, unfortunately, it's not at this point in time. Uh, we're going to be launching a Kickstarter soon to try to raise some more money. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is end up going uh, doing a live stream through Shoutcast. And then hopefully if we get enough money, which I sincerely doubt, uh, but move into video as well. Uh, okay. Someone's asking what microphone I'm using. I can't remember the exact model, but it's a Behringer. Uh, it was about 20, 30 bucks off eBay. Um, I have an MXL 990 condenser that I use, but I haven't really tested it since I moved. And I kind of wanted to go with the mic that I knew would work. I uh, guess Patreon is on the table. Uh, what programming language do we use to QA test? I don't actually do the programming. I just basically poke holes when the when they uh, uh, the developers will write. I think they write in C, but I'm not entirely sure. But they just send me the files, and then I sit there and poke holes in them. I'm not quite real QA per se, but yeah, that's it. Uh, looking forward to anything announced at E3. I'm actually not that big of a video game guy, unfortunately. Uh, my favorite gadget, my smartphone, uh, hands down. I like having my little portable computer that fits in my pocket. Uh, beyond that, uh, polyhedral dice. Uh, so we are, uh, how come no Texas accent we're getting? Uh, because I was raised on television pretty much. Uh, it comes out a lot whenever I get really drunk, but it's, it's, I just never really picked one up because I've watched a lot of TV. I also watched a lot of British TV. I grew up on Red Dwarf. It was my favorite show as a kid. So I actually will pull out a little bit of a British accent sometimes, which is a little bit odd. But um, uh, one person, I guess, uh, my podcast is me. I'm actually the engineer, uh, and I do the recording. I'm the co-host. My host is Ross Watson, who worked on a video game called Darksiders 2. He wrote that. Uh, he also worked on Warhammer 40K roleplay line for a long time. Uh, we worked for Fantasy Football Games. We worked on the Star Wars role-playing game, Edge of the Empire, that came out. Uh, a lot of other things. And we usually have one to two guests that are from the gaming industry as well. Uh, Blazing Saddles or Mad Magazine? Mad Magazine, of course. But, um, effect is lost. In the yeah, it's because the lighting in here is bad. It's just a standard half wins or not for the tie. Uh, um, let's see, Android or iPhone user from Java 7815. Uh, Android, I had an iPhone 3G, no S, uh, and I liked it, but the screen size was too small once I got the, the real thing. So the, 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 not the, I, uh, I just said something. Uh, favorite Red Dwarf character, uh, Lister, of course. Like Orson Welles, uh, take that as a compliment. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, what a cat is getting a hell of a suntan. Oh, the poor thing is going to burn his ear off. Uh, let's see. Uh, Web7160 asked, what kind of content can podcast listeners get from your show? Uh, we do roundtable discussions on tabletop gaming. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's a lot like Twit, except we don't do a lot of news, but it's all about, you know, uh, tabletop games, mostly role-playing games like Dungeons and & Dragons, things like that. Um, have I ever eaten Lister's tripled fried egg chili chutney sandwiches? <laughs> chutney is hard to come by in Southeast Texas, believe it or not. So I have not done that, but I did try a triple fried egg sandwich. And yes, the bread does dissolve quickly. Uh, that's an in joke for those people who know Red Dwarf. Uh, Rusty Bones asks, Dark City or The Matrix? Tough call. Very similar aesthetics. And a lot of the sets from uh, uh, Dark City were reused on The Matrix. The rooftop chasing, for example. Uh, so that's a close call. I'm probably going to edge toward Matrix, though, just because I'm also a fan of um, Ghost in the Shell, which a lot of the style was also uh, ripped off of. Oh, uh, here's uh, a good question. Where did Obtruse come from? I'm jumping in here with. Yep. Uh, Pack and WS, where did Obtruse come from? It's uh, actually showed up when I was in high school. They had like SAT words of the week on the board. <laughs> so I. I saw Obtruse and I looked it up and it says hard to understand in a profound manner. And I'm like. That's pretty cool. So I've been using it since about 98, I think, is my username. So it's either abstruse or the abstruse one. Pretty much anywhere I can get a thing. You know, uh, can you reach up and move the cat away from the sun? Because the cat is oh really no. getting, oh. the cat is really getting a sunburn there. Come on, put there. Okay, a little, there you go. Push a little more. Oh, that's better. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, let's do two more questions for abstruse, and then we'll... Uh, do some match game. Uh, we're <laughs> the gotta kitty ask is solar favorite... powered. Go ahead. we got to ask my favorite board game, Analog. Uh, that's another tough call. There's a lot of my favorites over there. Uh, again, I would probably say Cards Against Humanity just because it's so much fun to play, but I've also got all the cards memorized at this point in time. Uh, my backup would probably be Castle Panic, which is a lot of fun for a co-op game. Uh, let's see. And one last question. Let's see if we can find this. Good. Uh, what did I want to be when I was a child? I always wanted to be a writer. Ever since I was a little kid, I just wanted to write. Uh, as soon as I was able to put pen and paper and the little scribbles I made made sense, I've been writing. Uh, I haven't gotten anything published yet aside from my column with Ain't Cool News, but uh, I'm working on it. Hopefully by the end of the year, Excellent. I might have something out. So Great. All right. So, Daryl... This was really great, and uh, don't forget, shoot me the email, and we want to thank you for being Chat Room Celebrity of the Week and Cat Herder <laughs> for getting the cat away from the sun. Um, thank Daryl, thanks me. so much. Okay, thank you. There you go, and keep watching the chat room because they usually type some uh, comments for you um okay so we're gonna play a little match game oh yeah i'll just mention the um, 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 um a box of crap anybody else said, you know uh let's see six people ordered boxes of crap and the post office said five of them are there already anybody else get a box oh crap anyway if you want one just shoot me an email just put box of crap in the subject line and uh, I'll send you an invoice. It's uh, eighteen fifty and eleven fifty, which I don't get because everything goes in a medium flat rate box. So I just throw crap in a box, uh, including a copy of Good Days and Mad, and the August issue of Mad, and one of those thirty-five year old Alfred E. Newman pictures, and. Uh, uh, oh, it's back to 84. It's back to 84. It's amazing the way when we're talking to someone in a distant location, their temperature, uh, I mean, the Internet's amazing. Uh, when we were talking to Daryl in Texas, the, uh, it immediately went into the 90s, and now that he's offline, it jumped back to the current temperature, 84. It's like just the NSA is just on top of everything. 
I think they're on top of my house right now because I hear a lot of noise on the roof. Um, there you go. You're crapping an invoice. Exactly. And someone is going to get the uh, keychain video cam and, um, you know, just stuff that's fun. But I just can't keep spending $400 a month just to store tons of crap. Um, all right. So let's do some match game. And I did write some questions, but now I don't know what I did with them. So we will go back to some old. <laughs> now, Alfred E. Newman does not autograph magazines. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Oh, okay. That was a reindeer landing on my roof. Weird Willie is weird. How weird is he? The only thing he ate at picnics was blank. Weird Willie was really weird. The only thing he ate at picnics was blank. Well, that's funny. <laughs> Watermelon seeds. Okay. We did this last week? No. We're getting better answers this week if we did. <laughs> 